Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a CPU cooler which is blurring the lines between air cooling and water cooling, and doing that for a particularly low price. Today we'll be taking a look at the Deepcool Gamax Series AG500 Black ARGB. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at the Gamax AG500 Black ARGB from the good people over at Deepcool. This is a CPU cooler which is quite literally blurring the lines between what is possible with a traditional style tower air cooler and that of a 360 or 240 mil water cooling AIO. The difference between this and a 360 AIO, similar to the one that I have in the system behind me, isn't a lot. And this comes in at a considerably lower price, somewhere in the region of about £40 here in the UK at launch. Obviously, depending when you're watching this, it may be a little bit more expensive, it may be a little bit cheaper. I'll put some affiliated links in the video description so you can check out it for yourselves. And I'll also put some links to the actual product page from Deepcool themselves, as they were good enough to send it over to us for review purposes. And I've got to be honest with you, I'm extremely glad they did. This thing is an absolute beast. Now, despite it looking like a very diminutive, compact tower cooler, it does fantastically well, it really does. And later on in the video, I'll be showing you some of the results in comparison with our 360 mil radiator, which we've got in the PC behind us, which is tested on the new AM5 platform, which is the Ryzen 7 7700X, which is well known for being a particularly warm processor, as are pretty much most of the current generation of CPUs. So please do stay tuned for that. But to begin with, we're going to go through, do a quick unboxing, show you what you get. Now, something I should say as well, this is very, very easy to install. There's one minor thing, which is a little bit of a pain, which potentially could be remedied with uh, slight revisions, but we'll take a look at that a little bit later. But overall, yeah, this is fantastic. If you're on the fence whether you should buy it or not, and it, you're weighing this up against other options, just do it. it. It is a very, very good cooler. And obviously, there are other versions as well, so you don't necessarily have to go for the black type version with the ARGB. There's a plain version, there's a white version, non-RGB, RGB, etc. Yeah, there's an absolute ton to choose from. So again, check out the links and you'll see the other versions that are available. So going through the packaging, usual stuff. To be honest with you, at the moment, Deepcool are doing all the right things in all the right places. The packaging basically, yeah, sums up exactly what it is, does what it needs to do, tells you about the product, shows you what it looks like, can't go too far wrong. All of the Deepcool coolers of recent times have been very good. They're definitely on a winning streak currently as we're at the beginning now of 2023, and uh, hopefully that will continue and with this one, it definitely will. On the back of the box, it has the specifications, which uh, I think have been done deliberately to be ridiculously small, so you have to head over to review sites and uh, places like YouTube to find out more about it. But if you uh, put your goggles on, you might be able to just to read that. I'll put some close-ups on the screen for you so you can get the general idea of what it is. Essentially, it's a 120 mil tower cooler. You've got five heat pipes. You've got a great fan on there, which has an RPM range between 300 and 1850 RPM, give or take 10%. And actually in our testing, it's pretty much bang on the money. Goes into like zero mode just under 300 RPM and in our maximum rated speed, I think we got about 1850, which is basically exactly what it says on the tin, which is awesome. Uh, it's also very quiet, even at sort of 50 to 60% load, you can't hear it at all over any of the other fans in the PC. So that is absolutely great. Uh, socket compatibility. So we're looking for AM4 and AM5. Yep, AM5 is supported out of the box. And on the Intel side of the fence, we've got LGA 1700, 1200 and the 115 x range. Doesn't have any mention of these other sockets, although there are some additional brackets in there, so potentially you might be able to get it to fit, but it doesn't definitely fit the LGA 775 series. So if you're looking at that, which is a little bit old now, this definitely will not fit. So I think that's pretty much it for what is actually on the box. Let's take a look and see what we get inside. It's actually a very, very kind of simple and straightforward thing. So you get the actual cooler in this nice styrofoam so it's not going to get damaged or anything it's all been packaged very well something which i have done already is taken off the protective bit off the bottom of the heat pipes there so essentially what we're getting is our accessories box which we'll take a look at shortly and this is the cooler itself it is actually very small the thing which you can tell where this is actually going to get most of its cooling potential and performance from is the fact that it's a little bit deeper so traditionally a lot of coolers would probably split that and have it as a dual stack cooler, but in order to make this fit into pretty much any setup, 
regardless of your VRMs and your RAM clearances, etc., they've made it slightly more compact, but we still do have those five heat pipes on there. So you've got five six mil heat pipes, of which you can see on the bottom there. So they are direct touch or direct contact heat pipes on that very nice solid block at the bottom. And that does actually make a difference when it comes to CPU cooling. Having a big block of metal literally on top of your processor, the heat pipe's obviously gonna wick most of the heat away, but what isn't wicked away by that will be absorbed by the metal block there, which is very good. And also it's thinned as well to allow a little bit more heat dissipation from airflow. Something which I should point out as well, for those of you that are using CPUs which uh, demand quite a lot from your VRMs, this is gonna be absolutely great. And the reason behind that is because you have got this fan which does move up and down on the fin stack with the clips. At the moment, it's kind of at its almost lowest point. But a benefit of that, which I found specifically for my particular setup, is because the fan is now underhanging, which it can do because the RAM clearance is fantastic, the benefit of that is obviously static pressure against the fan. Some of the air is going through the fan and also the fin, sorry, I should say. But what doesn't go through actually goes underneath and is going to blow directly towards your VRMs, which will allow your processor, in theory, to uh, potentially boost a little bit higher if the VRMs are running a little bit cooler. So definitely worth considering that. But overall, I think it's a fantastic design. Looks very nice. Five heat pipes. A little attention to the detail going on. So you've got the deep cool logo in this section here. You've also got some arrows as well. So on the side there, there's an arrow pointing to direction. So it means the fan spins that way. And on that side, it's got an arrow pointing that way, saying the direction of the airflow. So it's kind of little things like that which do make a difference on the product, in my opinion. The fan itself, 120 mil, 25 mil deep, addressable RGB using their new style fan blades, which some people have found get a little bit noisy on the AIOs at the top end. On this setup, not found that at all. Very, very pleasing noise signature. Practically silent, anywhere up to about 60, 75%. After that, you do hear noise going through the fin stack, which is kind of what you'd expect. But other than that, done very well. You've got rubber mountings, front and rear. Spring clips on the side, that is the downside of this. Spring clips are ridiculously, ridiculously hard to get off. Now, I don't have nails. If you've got nails, you may find this better. Um, even so, you're likely... Yeah, this one's giving a little bit now, I suppose because I've taken it off a couple of times, but you do have to put a lot of force on the side there to actually re relieve that. So in my original unboxing, or installation of this on our AM5, sorry, AM4 setup, because I've tested it on AM4 as well. I've done a video for that, so if you want to check that out, that'll be linked hopefully as well at the uh, video description at the bottom there. AM4 setup, very, very easy to install. AM5, again, very easy to install as well. It's a very good mounting mechanism, which we'll take a look at shortly. When it comes to connectivity, you've got the three pin, five volt addressable RGB, and also there is a pass-through, which has a protective cap on the end. So just pull that off and then you can daisy chain your addressable RGB. So if you've only got one header on your board and you've got multiple things you want to connect up, you can daisy chain them through there. So no problems at all. And on the other side of things, you do have a four pin PWM connection. I like this, they've done a relatively short cable. So in terms of cable management, it's great. You can just kind of tuck it away when you don't need it. And the addressable RGB one generally is either going to be either at the very top of the board or the very bottom. So you've got a nice bit of length there. So depending which way it has to go, it's absolutely fine. On the back of the cooler, we've got this really nice, interesting waffle design, which seems to be, again, everything of deep cool. They seem to be doing this on pretty much, I think, all of their tower coolers at the moment. I can't think of one that they don't do it on. So it's nice to see a little bit of something on there. I don't know if it makes any difference at all in terms of cooling performance. I don't think it would do, but maybe it does. I don't know. Uh, that is one of the ways you can tell which way you actually mount it as well. So waffles on the back, and the front side is basically like a flat channel. And also what we do have is some heat pipes which swoop backwards. So they've actually angled the heat pipes going towards the back a little bit. This means that you can have the fan in the normal place and you've got some extreme RAM clearance. I've installed this on a couple of boards now and every single one of them, you can use your four RAM sticks regardless of the RAM's height um, and pretty much width. I guess there might be one or two which may be spread out a little bit too much, but if you're just using kind of your regular Dominator Platinums, that sort of stuff, you can have four RAM sticks included on pretty much any motherboard and it's going to be absolutely fine and won't impede the fan or block it or mean you have to mount it or slide it up or anything. So that is great. When it comes to height, again, this is great because it is quite compact. 
and comes in around about 150 millimeters. So even the smaller or more compact cases on the market shouldn't find any problems at all. Most cases will go to somewhere around the 155 to 160 mil mark. So yeah, coming at 150, you're still gonna have a little bit of breathing room on the sides there as well. So that is excellent. So yeah, I think that is pretty much it for the cooler. So let's take a look at our accessories box. The accessories box is great. They haven't really wasted anything and it covers pretty much all the bases, like I said earlier, M4, M5, LGA 1700, 1200, 11.5X. So no issues there. And there isn't actually a great deal in here, which again is always nice to see. It means you don't have to worry about things too much and not get bogged down by things, but there is a, a pretty straightforward user manual. Again, I think they went to the same printer that printed the actual box stuff. So the text is a little bit small, but there's our pictures there. So kind of Ikea-esque, you can go along with the pictures. When it comes to included accessories, so there is a Intel backplate. And in order to adjust the arms, you just pull those out depending on your socket. So LJ1700 is the biggest one, 1200 next one down, etc. You get the general idea. So it's uh, pretty straightforward stuff. You do get an included sachet of the deep cool thermal compound, which obviously if you want to use, you can do, or I've used MX4 in our testing, but you can use whatever you like. You do get a top plate as well. So this is a universal top plate. So this fits the AM4, AM5, LJ1700, 1200, 11.5X. Same bracket for all of them, so no wastage, no extra bits of metal, which is really good. You do also get your mounting kits. So this is the AM5 one or AMD, AM4. So four screws there and the orange fluted plastic risers. Um, the only thing I did find with this on AM5 is on my particular motherboard, the MSI motherboard, pushing these over, they did require a little bit of extra force. On AM4, I found that if you turned the actual plastic bits upside down or whichever, that one way fitted on easy, the other was a little bit snug. I did find on AM5 they were snug on both sides, so yeah, it might require a little bit of extra pressure for AM5 users. On the Intel side of the fence, so there are some little black spacers. You've got some completely rounded ones, so that is going to be for your LGA1200 and also for the 11.5X, and also there's some fluted ones in there for the LGA1700 and the same screws for each, so yeah, that's all well and good. Very simple, very straightforward. So with that done, all the way, you can see what you get. Let's take a look at some performance numbers. Now, to be honest with you, with the performance numbers, I was actually really surprised. I have been using it in my system behind me and kind of wondering how things would go. I didn't expect it to compete with a 360 mil AIO, especially a relatively modern one. But as you can see from the temperature results, there's about four degrees difference on the top end. So our 360 mil AIO under load hit somewhere in the region about 86, 87 degrees Celsius, I believe it was. And with this, we topped out about 91, which to be honest with you, isn't a great deal. We're looking at kind of three, four degrees Celsius difference considering the size of this. And that is considerably more expensive. I think it's done fantastically well. When it comes down to the lowest recorded temperatures, not a great deal in it. And most people probably won't pay much attention to those, but we did see an improvement with the 360 AIO, which you would expect. Got down to about 35 degrees Celsius as an idle temperature. And with this, I think it was about 36, 37. So kind of within spitting distance. And if maybe there's a Windows update or antivirus update going on in the background, you can quite easily see those things kind of swap places. So I would say in terms of the kind of idle speeds and stuff, they're kind of the same, but definitely there was a win for the 360 AIO, albeit by a very, very small margin indeed. Where there was a very small difference, again, I guess it comes with the territory, running our Cinebench tests now when I run this with my AIO, getting about 20,200 points with our Ryzen 7 7700X. And with this one, we were getting somewhere in the region of about uh, 20,000, maybe 20,100. So it's kind of almost within margin of error territory. It is a couple of hundred points higher with the AIO, but again, it's a very, very small difference. Maybe if we had a couple of thousand points difference, it would be a different story altogether. But for me, in terms of how easy to install this is and how cheap it is and how effective it is, I think DeepCool have done a fantastic job on it. So there you go, there's my thoughts and the unboxing on the DeepCool Gamax AG500 BK ARGB. These names are getting longer, I swear they are. Uh, a great cooler. I think probably this will be one of those things, much like the GameX 400, where it's one of those kind of classic coolers. I think this might actually become one of those in time. But 
as usual, only time will tell. And talking of time, if you've got more time on your hands, feel free to subscribe to the channel. It's completely free, doesn't cost you anything, and you get to see content like this on a daily basis. So if you want to do that, hit subscribe, hit the chime notification, and you'll be notified of future video releases. I think that's going to wrap things up. Deep cool, thank you very much for sending this over. I'm very pleased you did. I was a little bit dubious, thinking, oh god, here we go, another tower cooler. But no, it's been absolutely excellent and thoroughly recommended. So if you see one in your local area and you're looking for a tower cooler, definitely one to check out. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.